Welcome, everybody, uh, to Coffee and Councils. I'm Jeff. Um, thank you for stopping by. Uh, we've also got on the horn uh, Gil Gowing from Abbott as well. Uh, so thanks to him. I'm not sure if Robert's on as well, um, but uh, some other folks from Abbott are here. As always, uh, if you um, want to exchange, interject, please do. Uh, you can also throw things in the chat. And um, if it's simple, Gil can answer it. Otherwise, we can kind of bring it into the conversation. Um, this session is going to be a little bit different. I think they're probably all different, but um, uh, what I wanted to do is is really kind of go back to basics by hitting some big topics. Uh, obviously, most of the time we're kind of introducing a new workflow, whether that's a signable knob or custom plugin mapping or whatever that might be. And we've certainly talked about some of these things we're going to talk about in a second over time, but I want to kind of dive, dive deeper into some essential things that I think are really really worth a, a deeper dive. If you haven't taken advantage of folders, you really, 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 really should. So that's one of those big kind of arching conversations I want to look at, and then maybe give you a couple strategies along the way that I've come up with um, to, again, there's lots of different ways to manipulate the folders and to structure things. And I want to kind of give you some different strategies to, to take advantage of that. So folders, layouts, selection, banking, tracks, those are kind of very big concepts. And um, those are some of the ones I want to cover. Um, as always, if you've got something you know interesting to interject and and pivot the conversation, do we're happy to happy to have that conversation. And thanks for stopping by. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail about my setup. It's pretty similar, but I do have another machine today. Um, I do actually have two workstations online, and I want to maybe show a little bit of fun uh, multi workstation control and some other things that are leveraging some of the concepts I want to discuss. Okay, so um, let's kick it off. And um, we're gonna we're gonna go through some ideas. And as always, it'll be a little bit nonlinear, but that's just the way my brain works. So. Um, so the first thing I want to kind of talk about briefly is I've I've you're looking at the console, you're looking at the output of the master module all kinds of things. I'm going to go over to the surface page. And the first thing is I, I set this up totally different than I normally have it set up. And what does that mean? Well, my console is basically the same. This is an S6. Um, and I've got contiguous 16 faders in the center section. But just to change it up, um, I actually said, you know what, instead of doing the discrete eight, eight fader you know, spill zones, let's just kind of do one giant zone and see if I can live that way for a while. And that's exactly what I did. So if you actually look over here and we kind of go to config um, and look at the spill zone, I've got one giant spill zone. And we're gonna explain kind of what that's about in a second. But I, I think it's really cool to kind of work a little different way and kind of experiment like, does this make sense? Nah, that's not, that's not working. But in this case, there's a lot of things about this I really like, and I'm gonna show you that in a second. Um, along the way, just while we're here, it's not a bad idea. I'm also gonna hit export down here. Just wanna briefly mention that. Um, it's actually kind of handy. It spits out an XML file. It's not just the configuration of the console, but it also contains like uh, a registration, like serial numbers, right? So you could actually email that to like your reseller, for example. And in there, you would actually have all of the individual uh, module serial numbers. Uh, which can be very handy. So um, just uh, hit export and uh, it'll dump that XML to a, a, a jump drive attached to the back of the master module, which I think is pretty slick. So let me just show you kind of the, the new workflow that I have here. And then we're going to use that to pivot into folders and really kind of take a little bit of a deeper dive on folders. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm basically saying I've only got one left spill zone. I, I'm kind of really going to leverage zones but I'm doing everything, and we just let's go scroll to the top of the user preferences. Whether we're talking about VCAs, right, which are here, whether we're talking about folders, which we're going to talk about a lot, dump everything into the left zone. And so I only have a left zone kind of defined. Okay, so that's kind of the first idea that I thought was pretty interesting. So, um, so as such, if I and you're looking at the console, if I say, oh, let me just jump into, um, you know. Uh, into drums, right? I can certainly attention. Let me collapse this for just a second. Okay, I'm going to jump into bass. Okay, so it obviously spilled, uh, and it spilled into a 16 fader container because it only knows that I have one spill zone. Okay, so the, the benefit is I've got as much real estate as possible, kind of always. And then um, for kind of solving some contextual problems, which we always talk about, like you know, doing two things at once. I'll show you some ideas I've got with that in a bit. 
Okay, so I'm going to hit menu to kind of go back out. And um, so that's the start. That's kind of the beginning of the conversation. Okay, we looked at a couple preferences. So any kind of auto spills, whether I manually spill or auto spill, it's going to dump that into left zone, which is right there. Okay, that's the left, left guy. Okay, so with that said, let's go to let's talk about folders. We could probably do a whole hour about folders, honestly, because it's so it's so important and so critical. This is a relatively simple session, right? It's just it's music, it's stereo music. There's normal food groups of drums, bass, keys, vox. It doesn't matter, right? Whether you're doing huge posts, small posts, big music, small music, atmos music, stereo music, it doesn't matter. It's all about your structure, your organization, your color coding, and leveraging what's in there namely folders okay so that's kind of what i want to start with and i want to show you some techniques um and kind of on the desk lots of ways to manipulate those folders okay and concepts too children siblings um and um basics routings all that kind of thing okay so let's start at the beginning um on the desk here well first of all within the whole session you can actually see it right here there's a whole there's a giant basic folder called low roar which I'm gonna just go and hit attention on the desk, okay? And if you saw it before, my auto spill preferences are set to uh, to basically on attention, it's auto spilling into the members of the giant whole session. Why do I have a whole session basic folder? It's a really good idea. Actually, Gil created this session, but um, a lot of other people leverage this. It's really smart to have all the units, all the session structure in a folder. And then also in the, you know, within the Pro Tools session, you know, maybe you have you have you know delivery elements, you have OMFAAFs, you have infrastructure for other you know for for streaming for Zoom forever. You know, you get the idea, right? There's a lot of reasons why you might do that. So I've basically attentioned into the giant basic folder, which is called Low Roar, and um, let's talk about some concepts of like opening and closing and um, and siblings and children and stuff like that. I'm also going to open up on the soft keys here. There's actually a folder track section. So the basic, very basics is attention and what would be normally essentially the input switch is going to open or close the folder. OK, that's a very, very essential and, and fundamental uh, capability. Right. You can also do that from the attention strip. Right. If that thing's been attentioned, I can certainly do it over here as well. OK, so with that said, let's quickly pivot into some concepts of basically uh, children and, and siblings. So I've actually um, taken some of these. And again, the concept of these soft keys is not that, you know, you always have to go and use them where they are. It's really about saying, hey, there's some new stuff in Pro Tools. You should use it and pick out the things that you think are interesting and throw away the other things and use it in your workflow if it makes sense. So check it out. Basically, I've customized and I will I will customize to the day I die. Uh, and basically what I've done is I've basically said the period here is siblings. And I'll explain what siblings are. The zero is children, child folders. OK, and that I've just taken I've stolen these and I have put them here and I've only done that to make it more efficient, kind of make it a little bit quicker. OK, so everything's collapsed. It's all subcontained in the low roar folder, which you can see here on the master module. You can see here. Um, so if I say open, um, I'm going to say open children, right, or toggle children, right, on this guy, which is I'd set to zero, it's going to basically open up everything under that structure, right? So my food groups are open, and everything underneath those are open too, right? Okay, so that's kind of the concept. I can hit zero again, and it collapses the whole thing, right? It closes the children, and that's what that's doing. So let's open it back up, zero again. And now I'm going to jump into the, the tree, right? I'm going to jump into the tree with attention. I already told you everything is going to end up in my giant spill zone left, right? I'm going to attention drums now. Just hit attention on drums, and it oh, took me into my drums, right? Same workflows you're kind of used to with VCAs or folders, but it got me in there. And drums is now over here, right, on the attention strip. So let's look at the next thing. The next thing is, um, is siblings. What's a sibling? Well, it's everybody on the same level. Right, so drums is all the food groups are on the same level: drum, bass, electric guitars, acoustic guitars, strings, yada yada yada. Now, if I hit period, I'm basically expanding or collapsing all of the food groups, right? So you can see the granular control <clears throat> you have over 
um, all of the different subfolders that are within your session. Now, this is not just this session. This could be any workstation attached to the rig. So without pivoting off the folder concept too much, I'm just going to re, I'm going to hit period. It flattens all my food groups, right? I'm going to do something else here, which I'll explain in a second. I'm going to hit two. Two says, go get me the second system, which in my case is a recorder. Actually, it's a multi-purpose thing, but it's a different workstation, right? Now I'm looking at that and I can then kind of open and close chunks of folders that live on, on that rig, right? And so now I'm looking at, you know, drums or print tracks or subs or whatever they might be. So I'm going to just, I'm going to close the prints right now and we're going to open the subs. Okay. And you can see that kind of happen there. Okay. So what did I do there? Well, basically, again, I'm customizing. I'm saying I've got a recorder rig on two. One and two, it could be one through seven if you want. One and two are workstations. So instead of having to jump over to the workstation page, I can just go one, make a change. And when we actually look at a little bit of layouting and aggregating right, multiple things, it's pretty cool to be able to just quickly get to a different machine. So I know I'm, I'm diving in fast, but, <laughs> but that's the idea. So customization is your friend, okay? So back to the primary machine um, is just hitting one and we're back there, right? And we're looking at food groups and we can, again, hit period. And what does period do? Period is basically uh, it's expanding all of the siblings, right? It's basically it's expanding siblings. Okay. So, so those are the start of the conversation. There's some other functionality in here that I'm going to mention, but I don't like I, I don't think it's amazing. Like I could actually go and, and I could go, you know, hold down shift. I hate kind of multi multi finger operations, but I could do shift open and then I could click on drums and that would open that. But it's, you know, I wouldn't recommend that personally. I don't think that's a great workflow to be able to have to do multiple fingers. I think you should stay here or do it a different way. Um, and but you can obviously monitor what's going on in the master module, right? Um, Okay, we did a little bit of um, spilling of that kind of thing. Um, oh, so the next thing I wanted to show you is now that we've kind of introduced that I have two systems, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit extras. They're satellite linked also, right? So you probably see that. I can jump into um, my satellite controls, right? And you see at the top of the Pro Tools interface, my, my recorder and my source, I can send selections, all that kind of thing. So they're gonna play in sync. They're gonna play gear lock together. Right. And the, the other machine is down there at the bottom right hand corner, the MBZ. Okay. So I just want to show um, a, a couple ideas, right? Um, of, okay, if I have this concept of, hey, I only have one big container, how can I do some contextual things or, or get to effects returns or VCAs? Um, those kind of ideas, right? So that's kind of what I thought about. So one way to ap approach that would be to lock a strip. Okay. So we'll show you a couple ways to do that. So um, we're going to bank, we're just going to use our little banks, bank keys, which are up here. Okay. And I'm just going to bank until I essentially push VCAs off to the edge. That's really what I'm kind of doing here. So I've, I've stuck a VCA folder over on the edge and I'm going to do a tension, which, and what would be record and I'm going to lock that. Okay. Why am I doing that? Well, I'm basically gluing it in place and a lock is the highest level of precedent right which means if i jump into let's look at electric guitars i just hit attention and you're already familiar with that workflow we've talked about a lot um where i'm now eqing my electric guitars right or whatever food grip i want i'm there i've got access to it i've got the i've got the folder the routing folder for electric guitars right here okay but check it out i've actually got my i've kind of glued the vca folder over here and i get attention vcas right and now i've got all of the balancing for any of the um, any of the groups, right? Any of the actual Pro Tools groups that contain bass drums, whatever the food groups are. Okay, so that's kind of cool because I can kind of throw that over there, um, and it's it doesn't go away until I put it away. Now another idea, which is kind of cool, um, is let's just let's just put that away. Let's actually just hit attention. What would be record, and let's throw something else over there from a different system. So I'm going to go hit two. And um, we're going to go interrogate, we're going to go look at the second system, the second workstation. And I actually have a print and we can collapse everything once again. So let's just say um, period, right? What does period do? It closes or opens all of our siblings, which is really handy because if at a glance you don't know what you're looking at, 
you can just go to the t that level structure and hit period and then you've basically you know you you look at all the structures i have subs print utility and creation that's what i have right now okay so um and I'm, that's on the other one it's a little bit small but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go and throw the print um well let me explain what's here first right so let me open this up and um just so you can see it and hit play so I've got meter deflection and what's going on is these are flowing, these are the food groups that are flowing into auxes on this system and then they're flowing into print tracks. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the prints as well and we can pop those into input. So I'm just gonna do option, just gonna, just gonna put these in input. They're in track punch right now. So if we hit play, you're gonna see meter deflection um, on, the, on, the, on the subs flowing into the print tracks again it's just a music session you could do a lot more complex you know multi-channel 5.1 or atmos flow but it's the same idea um but what i was going to do is we're going to go back and i'm going to collapse this and we're going to go and grab print i'm just going to go grab print and throw it over here okay so there's the print i'm going to lock it just to show you this okay so it's locked and now we're going to go back to this first workstation so what did i just do well basically i have the ability to to look at this right immediately and um have access to my print tracks right that's kind of what we're doing so if i hit attention on the print tracks right and hit play now we're printing okay so so back up just a second sorry i kind of fumbled what i was going to do there but the point being was if you lock something off you have the ability to access it right and now i'm actually looking at those tracks from that machine okay so there they are and what you're seeing on the let's just go over to the, the camera view here for a second what you're seeing on the display modules is uh are all of the print tracks for the music being recorded in track punch okay um i'm viewing waveforms and meters and that might not be a particular view that you're used to but sometimes it can be really handy because it gives you a very kind of wide fat representation of that thing. So the second that I hit that I collapse this right I'm back to my, my, my primary session, my primary system, my source system. So it's kind of slick and it's one just possible way to quickly get to, in this case, print tracks um, that are on a separate separate system. OK, so I wanted to show um, the, the ability to kind of dock something. OK, so. I can put that away and to put it away I can just basically hit attention unlock and whatever was previously being shown there is now there okay so obviously I could do the same thing with VCAs could do the same thing with effects returns but basically kind of came to the idea that um it is beneficial to have the container size to be able to see a lot of elements at one time right if I want to see drums I have all the drums in context at one time. Um, and if there's something like effects returns or some send to a, 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 a folder I need to get to, I can just lock it and stick it somewhere, right? I can have access to a folder, a routing folder or a basic folder that contains things that I can get to. So that's the concept. I think it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so let's, um, let's look at layouts a little bit um, and just make a check our time. Okay, we're doing okay. And this will kind of kind of fold into more conversation about seeing multiple things uh, at one time. So the benefit of the layout kind of very high level once again is to be able to uh, assemble and recall a collection of strips of channels that are independent of Pro Tools Show Hide, right? That are independent of what you're seeing in Pro Tools, um, which can be very, very useful. And um, a couple of really important concepts that come up constantly and um, need to be kind of revisited uh, all the time. The first one is on the workstation page and just draw your attention to the workstation page um, at the bottom right hand corner. You want to make sure that the Pro Tools, whatever it's Pro Tools 21 or Pro Tools 20, in this case, it's Pro Tools 22 Mac, make sure that it has a blue star next to it. And what that means is it means that on the system page, if you look at the top of the system page, all of these attributes like lock strips, which I showed you, like uh, track layouts, which we're gonna do right now in meter layouts, that stuff is going to be handled and gonna be sent back to the Pro Tools session. So we'll talk about titles in a second, but um, it's very important and you wanna make sure 
that uh, you do see a blue star there, and that means that it's managed. That when you save your layout, it's going to be restored uh, correctly when you open the job when you open the Pro Tools session. Okay, so let's make some layouts and let's show you kind of all the uh, important things. Um, the concept also, and not to kind of muddy the water, but I would highly recommend now with current current Pro Tools, current S4, current S6, you should be leveraging the Pro Tools session to handle the console attributes because you have far more predictability. You don't have to manage a title file that has a certain name and date and job and show. I would think of the title as a backup. What is the title? I haven't even explained what that is yet. Well, the title is basically a, a um, you know, if I'm working on um whatever i'm working on i'm going to make a title which is now called jjk bob one okay what i wanted what i wanted to show you basically and it's probably kind of hard to see but if you look really closely underneath the rain right above the rainbow bar you're going to see current title jjk bob one that's the name of the title file the xml uh session data pro tools 22 mac on source source is the name of the workstation what this is telling me is that all the attributes not just the not just the layouts is going to be stored is is being stored in two different places it's being stored in the pro tool session file on the machine called source um, and it's also being it's also associated with the title file okay but i would use the title file only as a backup and only in a you know uh in a kind of an emergency situation essentially okay so we'll come back to that in a second um so let's just do some basic layouting so what we're going to do is we're going to and let me let's, let's expand our view here real quick so we can see a little bit different um okay so we're looking at the console um and we're just going to create a layout and the, to do this you're going to go and you're going to touch assign okay and by default it's going to bring you back kind of the last thing you were working on um and because it's assuming oh maybe you want to modify that you want to add or remove strips you know whatever so that's kind of what it's doing so there's a lot of possibilities here if you did want to modify you could you could delete you could clear all you could um you know ripple things right sometimes people will and here let's just jump in here to a couple preferences real quick um number of strips in the layout and um yeah we'll stay here for now so number of strips in layout it can be virtual meaning it can be bigger than the number of physical things you have and that would be you're working in different rooms you want to share with somebody else and you want that to show up on a stage that has 48 faders and that's why you would do that Swap layers we've talked about, I'm not going to get into that right now, just to say that we now have up to four virtual layers under every location on your physical desk, which is super powerful. So, so those are two important preferences to look at, and I'm in the gear, I'm on the tracks page always, I'm under the gear, okay, so that I just wanted to kind of set that up. So let's just do a couple simple gymnastics here. Uh, I'm going to say I want to add some things, but I want them to start here. Maybe I want a couple um, percussion elements or tambourine or something. And I want to just kind of file those in at the top. So what I would do is I would basically go into insert mode and I would say, hey, yeah, you know, I want the tambourine and I want the percussion. So I select those in the order that I want them. I pop into insert and then I choose where you want to ripple from. So I'm going to ripple from one. And it just rippled from one. It said, hey, keep everything the same. But you know what? Um, throw some percussion in there. And I'd like to see EQ on these as well. Okay, so when it brings this back, it should be bring back my percussion with EQ on it as well. So that's a very, very simple modification of an existing layout. I'm gonna hit store, okay? And now a couple important things here. You've got a lot of layouts. You don't have to use them all. Understand that you have 96, you've got tons. Um, and obviously you can have multiple sessions, multiple titles. But you want to dump this into a location and you want to give it a name that makes sense, right? Drums and Park, whatever, right? Give it an intelligent name. And one kind of recommendation, if you're doing a lot of layouts and you're doing a lot of stuff on the console that requires nomenclature naming, you might want to get a little keyboard, <laughs> a little QWERTY and, and just hook it up to the USB in the back of the master module. It can really save massive time especially if you're renaming tracks a lot making titles uh making uh, layouts a lot there's a lot of there's several different operations where you might want a tiny little keyboard i think it's great personally i've created it it's in slot 10. if you want to move it you can just touch it and and drag it when we get into the edit function so we're going to go there in a second i'm going to hit store again and the second store basically said okay now it is living in where is it living in again well it's in the title jjk bob one 
and it's also being more importantly being saved back to this Pro Tools session. So we did this. We we put this text here as a uh, as a uh, a check, right? So that you, as the operator, can say, "Oh yeah, I'm good. It's going back to Pro Tools on my machine called Source." So that's a very useful thing to just look at that and say, "Oh, you know what? It's not." Let me go check what's going on with my workstations. And that's why we put that text in there so that you can double check that you know your stuff is being stored, okay? Anyway, I got to back, back to that conversation. <laughs> so um, how do we get it back? Well, there's a layout button up here, right? You press it and it's going to populate some of the soft keys and that's a preference. You can eat up one, two, you can eat up, you can have them show up down here. You can you can set that up however you want. I think right now it's basically giving me what 24 uh, layouts, which is fine, and it's populating the master module. And so all I've got to do is press the last one that I stored, which is drums and perk, and it shows up. That's lit blue. I'm in a layout, um, and a layout is one to one. So that tambourine is always going to be here, fader one, always. Right, that's the way it works. It's in EQ because I told it to be in EQ, um, and um, to get it to get rid of it to get back to bank channels um you're just going to want to press layout again that's the fastest way it's just it, it press the same switch and it's going to take the layout away and you're back to wherever you were in your back bank channels okay let's do something a little bit more clever let's go back into our same layout and let's edit it and do some editing and, and additional manipulation and maybe even aggregating multiple systems so what we're going to do is let me go to a split view here let's go to this view now and take a look at that okay so what we're going to do is just to kind of reiterate we're going to go back to machine two i'm pressing two what is two doing well it's going back to my other machine once again and i had print tracks which you can see which i can collapse i'm, I'm using always using folders right so i'm going to collapse print and we're going to expand create because there's a whole bunch of different things on here and i've got some kind of creation ideas as well so go back to machine one console updates says cool we're on machine one the master module shows me what's there um i'm going to open up the layout and we're going to add some things from a different system so we're going to go back into layouts uh, actually let me show you a different way to do it because there's lots of different ways so we're going to go and press assign and i would already told you that if you hit assign it's going to default to come back into the layout that you were working on previously right so I can make changes to that. We're gonna come back to that in a second. I'm gonna hit edit. Edit's gonna show me all of my 96 layouts. And if I wanna get rid of something like Vox Create, oh, 43, yeah, that's garbage. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of that. And I actually want this guy to be here. Okay, I can reorder this, I can restructure it. I can rename it now. I can say, you know what? This is no longer drums of perk. This is something else. I can delete all, I can do any of that right there. Okay, a little bit of basics. So let's do a couple more things now. Let's actually add some of the creation tracks that are from the other machine. How do we do that? Well, we're going to go into um, we're going to go into assign mode, and I'm going to go into I can either clear or delete. Right? I can either ripple and, and delete, or I can clear. So what I'm going to do is we're going to basically go and I'm going to go to clear strip, and we're going to say eh. I mean, I could overwrite as well, but I just want to show you kind of blowing some things away versus delete, right? Essentially kill and then ripple, right? So that's what the difference is between those two. So I'm just blowing some things away within the previous layout that I was working on. I'm still in assign mode. I'm going to press two. What does two do? Or three or four or five? It's basically, in my case, it's going to go access a workstation. Now that could be Pro Tools. That could be Logic. That could be you know, source, source, that could be source recorder, that could be whatever. It's going to WS control and it's grabbing another system. And I'm gonna say, yeah, I want some of those, um, I want some of those um, instrument tracks that I was gonna use. So I'm gonna grab those. I want piano, edge, uh, synth, and I'm gonna dump those at 11. And those are gonna come in. And I would like to see those, I would like to see the processing on those as well, okay? So I'm gonna hit store. And we're gonna store and we're going to put it here so i'm actually making a change i'm making a new location making a new name so now this is basically let's just say perk plus instruments for example okay we're going to hit store one more time okay as said before it's going to show you what you have open you can press it again and it goes away right that's handy 
Um, if this is going away and you don't want it to go away, you can just go into settings and you can go look at the preferences for layouts. This can kind of confuses people a little bit. Um, and what it is is, let me just show you kind of where this is, um, where this is set, right? So um, it's right here, right? This says, first of all, it says use the master module stuff to show, um, you know, the top bunk bucket of soft keys to show uh layouts and then this says you know what when i'm done close the panel you may or may not want that what that says is once i press the layout boom i'm going to go back to automation on the soft keys totally up to you but that's how you get to that preference I wanted to show that that's important so in my case i'm actually gonna i'm gonna turn that off okay which means it stays here it's persistent i'm gonna go and press our new layout boom it's up it's open uh, let's just jump to, I'm going to go to memory locations. Uh, let's maybe go to verse two. So I'm going to hit play and now we're playing and actually I'm seeing note data, right? Cause those are instruments on those particular tracks for piano and edge and, um, and synth. Okay. And I'm seeing that in a, in a slightly wider view. So let me take a little, little side trip here for a second. Oh, just to kind of elaborate a little bit these chunk of tracks the instruments i pulled in which again they could be from logic i could have like drums and pro tools and instruments and logic but these are from a second pro tool system and um i brought those in and as far as i'm concerned as an operator i don't really care i open up the layout and i've got some percussion and things here and then i've got instruments from a different system and it doesn't really matter where they source from right so that's i think a pretty cool Cool idea, but what I want to show is the the views on the display module right and kind of how you can manipulate that a little bit because that's also powerful so i'm going to keep this open. And um, let's go and. let's take a look at something here real quick, just so you can see this i'm going to go to look at master module soft keys okay what is this well. Um, let me go back to big MTM view here for just a second. And I'm going to do a little gymnastics. I'm going to do shift uh, zoom vertical. Okay. What did that do? Well, it loaded into the whole top master module section. Um, all of the soft keys that control that are set up for you to control what the displays show. Right. So for example, I'm going to hit play. We're going to zoom in. Let's just zoom uh, in a little bit. Right. You can see that pretty obviously. I'm zooming a little faster. I'm going to zoom out. You can see more of the timeline. Okay. Um, let's just say I want to get back to a different way to re represent represent this, and I want to get to like function views, uh, you know, waveforms, meters, routing, function views. Simple. I see all of the. This is for the strips, and then I've got separate ones for meters and post. And I can just say, okay, let me do just waveforms and a single function, and boom. Now I've got. You can see EQ curves, I can see sends, I can see whatever I need to see, and routing, right, on those. And I can still have access to whatever particular zoom level I need for those tracks. Okay. So for things like uh for things like folders, routing folders, basic folders, it can be super nice to be able to um to uh to to see the waveform and meter view. I'm gonna press period again. What does period do? Period is toggle siblings. And check it out. Now we can actually look at, oh, you know what? Actually, we're in a layout. It's not going to do anything. <laughs> but now you can see if we get out of the layout, uh, you're looking at the folders and you kind of see a representation of the kind of the blocks that are in there, right? So the second that I expand drums, right? And it's going to expose the actual audio tracks in there. And then that drums is in a routing folder, which you can see right there, which kind of has a thumbnail representation, okay? So just want to kind of give you some hooks, some tools to be able to kind of control your world a little bit better. So we're looking at, again, wave meters and waveforms, right? And I can see that right here. Let's toggle a couple so you can see these. Meters and um, um, meters and dual function, uh, waveforms and dual function, right? Waveforms in a single function, and then back up to meters and waveforms, and then toggling into um, to all of that, okay? So I just brought up the soft key page, which you would customize, but I just wanted to show you what it would look like if you were sitting in front of it. And it's there's dedicated buttons to control uh, the, the standard strips and then also the master meters and the post meters, which maybe we'll talk about a little bit. OK, how are we doing? We're doing good. OK, so we just 
kind of took a side road into into metering and display modules, right? But I want to back up back into layouts a little bit. We're going to go back. Everything that you do with layouts always happens on the tracks page, right? All the management of that. Um, with soft keys, with, with quick jumps, once again, shift zero is going to get you back to the top level, you know, your starting point, right? I set up these quick functions to be able to say, you know, basically collapse or expand. And let's go back to a kind of a composite view so you can see Pro Tools a little bit better here. Right? This was set up intentionally to be able to collapse or expand quickly all of my food groups. And you can see on the master module as well, quickly expand, jump in, and then obviously in Pro Tools, right? You're seeing all the, the, the elements, the units, the tracks, the actual, you know, kicks or snares or, or pads or whatever that are nested under those, right? And that was just kind of giving myself um, a little bit more control. Um, to get back to our layouts, let's pivot and do a totally different way to do this. Um, you can do shift backslash. And these are just a local way to access the same stuff you have up here. So it's just a different approach, same concept. So percussion and instruments, boom, I'm in there. We already talked about this. You can see this is from, these are elements from a different system right let's uh let's take this and and open it and blow it away and do something totally different right so all i got to do is hit assign i'm in assign mode if i want to start over instead of kind of augmenting or deleting a couple all i do is basically shift clear all right it's a good place to start um and now take a look at the bottom this is also important actually yeah okay so it only has 16 destinations because I um, told it to show 16, right? Check it out. I told it to only show 16. I could have seven. I could have 32 if you want, right? I can have it. I can say I'm going to end up on a rig that has 32. Uh, so let's just do that just for the just for the conversation. I want to show you one more thing in here that's not very understood and it's a little bit interesting. And there's there's applications for it. Okay. So I'm going to go out of assign mode. I did not make any changes, right? I did not actually edit anything. I didn't store it, which means when I go back into this, I'm going to actually uh, add or or make some changes to just the first chunk of eight tracks within this other layout. Okay, we're going to go back into assign mode, and we are going to uh, add some different elements, right? So I'm going to scroll to the top. And we're going to go maybe add some control over some, oh, some VCAs and some headphone controls. Two, three, and one more. Okay. So I've made some changes. I can change some function views. I can, I can add swap layers. We're not going to do swap layers right now. Again, that's the concept of actually not just dumping one set of tracks in here, but think about there's a layer, there's an invisible layer under each strip if you want up to four deep, right? That'll kind of, uh, you can go there if you want, but we're not going to do that with this particular example. Uh, let's just look at signal flow, which is inserts, okay? We made some changes to an existing layout. Now, here's the interesting thing. I'm going to actually hit store, and we're going to do box plus headphones, okay? Now, before we hit store, I'm actually going to choose what it updates and this you might not be hip to this, but basically what this is saying. It's saying this layout is only going to update the first eight tracks. It's showing 32. Why is it showing 32 because I set the preference to be 32. But it's only targeting the first eight strips to actually refresh. Now, if you had a big console and you wanted to actually just you know, um, refresh as fast as possible, you could actually minimize what changes from layout to layout. That's one possible approach. I've limited it to eight, hit store, and see if I can show you how this works. If we go back to our Vox plus create, which is right here, you have drums, you have hi-hats, and then again, this stuff is common, right? Lead Vox and then the instruments from the second system are common. If I press my new Vox plus headphones, it's only going to update and it's, it's kind of subtle because you're like, well, didn't it just draw the whole thing? No, it actually didn't. It only drew the, it only made changes to the destination strips that I chose it to be. So this one actually updated everything because that's the way it was set. Um, this guy is only making, uh, making changes to said strips, 
I know it's kind of a little bit more of an eccentric um, uh, conversation, but it can help with performance and it can help with, um, you know, quickly making changes to views and getting those as kind of performant as possible. Okay. Um, okay. So again, obviously I kind of went, went down a rabbit hole, but, uh, but uh, some of that's uh, very important to understand. So you can aggregate layouts, right, from multiple systems, right? You can, the most important thing, if you're going to use layouts is A, understand that where your stuff is going. My stuff is going to Session Data Pro Tools 22 Mac on source. I see that right here. I'm going to double check. Yep, Pro Tools has a blue star. And then also on the settings page, I want to know the attributes that I, um, uh, and, and just to understand this, this is stuff that's being recalled, not stored, right? So the console will always store everything that it can possibly store, lock strips, bank states, layouts, meters, post module state, all of that. These tick boxes here are just what you're bringing back, right? The XML always contains everything. This is saying, you know what? I don't want those lock strip states to come back. That does not delete the data. The data is still in there. You're telling it not to restore it. If that, hopefully that makes sense. It's not destructive, right? Um, but the critical thing, once again, I, I'm going to re reiterate one more time, is to take a look at the tracks page and understand where your data is going and, 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 and use, use the Pro Tools session file because it's more, um, it is, you're going to get a better workflow by getting all of the attributes, all the things that you want back, okay? Um, okay, I think I've said enough about layouts. <laughs> so um, let's do a little bit of, um, how are we doing on time here? We're doing pretty good. Let's do a little bit of uh, quick banking, and then we'll do a little bit of selection. We'll see what we can do in the small time we have here. Okay, so um, let's do some let's do some banking, right? This is this is probably super obvious and easy for everybody, but maybe not, right? I don't. I'm not going to assume everybody knows everything. So there's lots of different ways to bank, right? And uh, the default way, which might not be the best way, is you got little tiny switches up here. And those are nudges and those are banks, right? And that's just one possible way. Um, in the preferences, right? If you go again back into your, your gear, you're going to be able to choose the chunks of, of how those bank. Actually, I'm sorry, it's in settings, right? It's under the, the main user settings. You're going to be able to choose, oh, it's going in chunks of eight strips, right? Or I could do whole surface. And that's what it's, it's banking in chunks of, okay? So that's important. Um, so those are, that's one way to bank. I think a better one just kind of in the heat of the battle, regardless of where you are on the console, is you can use your user one and two, right? And those are great because you can be in a layout, you can be in a spill zone, you can be in a bank track, uh, track you can be anywhere and they work, right? So that's a great one. Um, there's a dedicated quick jump for banking and it, it gives you the granularity of doing banked, banked strips, lay, lay, uh, spill zone left, spill zone right. It gives you everything in one view. That is shift enter. So. The stuff in the middle is basically bank strips, right? And so this is basically, you know, I can I can nudge by one, I can bank in chunks of again, we're chunks of eight, or I can go home or end, right? So and then on the edges, you've got left spill zone, right spill zone. So again, if I was back in my initial mode, I had all that control too at the same time. So this just gives you a quick kind of control panel to do all, any kind of banking that you want at once. Now. Um, if you're somewhere else, this is a good one too. You do have a, a, a switch in the extras, but shift, shift, bank, shift, uh, bank is basically home, right? Which is which can be very useful. Okay, there is a bank home. I think we stuck in the soft keys of extras as well. But those are those are really useful. Um, okay, a couple other things. Um, we're gonna go back and we're gonna explode out all of our uh, food groups. Toggle siblings. We're in. We're looking at a track. I'm gonna shift control, click on the expand base and boom, that guy showed up here, right? Um, and it basically, the console banked to that thing that I targeted in Pro Tools, right? I'm gonna to go to the Vox lead. The Vox lead is now here, okay? So that's one other technique. Um, we're gonna turn on, on the, on the gear, we're gonna turn on auto bank to attention track and we're gonna do something different. We're gonna go and touch the room mic. Okay, that's another way yet to get to, and let me go back to, sorry, let me go back to the console, and we're going to go touch the bass guitar. 
right? That's a totally different way to get to a specific track. Enable that locally on the gear, say, you know, auto bank to the attention thing, and then I can go back and touch the room mic, and I'm gonna get room mic right here, okay? So that's that's a good one. A couple other ones that are very, very useful that you're gonna, uh, that you may leverage, and I, you know, I haven't, we haven't done it yet, but the Pro Tools search is actually also a really, really cool, really powerful new feature. Um, so what I could do, let's just say I want the lead Vox really quickly, right? I could either do the scroll the track from a soft key. If I knew the keyboard shortcut, I could do that. Or if I don't know, I, I don't know what it is. I'm just going to go and um, start typing, right? Scroll to track, right? I don't know what the function is. And it's actually going to, that's just Pro Tools search. It's going to let me, um, it's going to let me uh, figure out what that is. And I want the lead Vox, right? Vox delay or whatever, right? And basically it's here, right? So it got me there. It got me to that track um, either by just pressing the soft key, or if you don't know, you can use Pro Tools search, which is really handy. And it basically you just literally start typing and, you know, you can open close folders. You can, you can, you know, scroll to a track, whatever. And then I want to get to the kick and I want the second kick drum. And then if you look at Pro Tools or you look at the desk, right? It got me to the second kick drum, which is really pretty great, right? So <clears throat> you can use the keyboard shortcut. You can ha leverage the soft key. The soft key is right here, which is scroll the track. Um, or you can use Pro Tools search is another totally different way to do it, right? Okay. Oh, track filtering is good too. This is a an important an important skill to understand. So let's go and let's go to a big big view here. Let's show you a couple things. Okay. So we're we're in system one, right? Primary session, music session. I'm gonna go back to system two. Um <clears throat> and um we're going to let's see, let's close create. We're gonna close the folder. We're going to maybe open everything. Let's just attention this. We're going to open everything up again. So it's kind of expanded in system two. Showed you that toggle, toggle siblings. I'm going to go back to system one. Okay. What I want to show you is filtering of tracks. What do I mean by that? Well, regardless of whether you have a spill zone open, right? You can always press the tracks button. Uh, I'm sorry, the type button. Sorry, the types button. And that will do a global filter. What if you just want to quickly see VCAs, right? You can basically just press um, press VCA, and it's without a spill zone, without a layout. You've globally filtered to see VCAs, right? And obviously, within that idea, yeah, I can spill. I can actually take advantage of spilling and things like that. But that's a quick way that can be very handy. Like for example, I think in Gill's in the construct of his session, he's of the mind that the uh, the effects returns are associated with each food group, right? So the, so the delay or the reverb or whatever, the, uh, you know, the melodic stuff, um, the modulation stuff on the guitars is in the guitar folder. So to get to that, I could, I could go into, I could attention into the Vox, I'm sorry, into the effects VCA. And now I have nothing but effects returns, right? That's actually pretty cool. So if I press all and I press insert, um, now I'm looking at all inserts view, which tells me the process on these. I see tape echo, I see reverb one, revive, I see mod delay. That actually, when you have multiple workstation, that all switch is actually going to change every system to that view, right? So if we go to system two, it should show us, well, we're spilled in, but it should show us, and it did, it showed us insert view, okay? So... So just to just to kind of back up a little bit, uh, being able to get to effects returns is very handy, right? That's one way without having to build a layout, without having to navigate a tree that I already would have created. Hey, I can get to that revive that's here. And as we've talked about many times, I can press into it and I can have take leverage custom custom mapping, which we've done a million times, um, but is crazy powerful and gives me incredible control, whether doing a static or, or dynamic automation on this, okay? So I happen to have both knobs and faders mapped, and I'm leveraging the uh, the auto expand on insert, um, insert selection, which basically means I'm back out. And again, whenever you traverse a path, 
you always use the menu switch to get back, right? And, you know, if I press right now, I would do shift bank or home to be able to see more of the VCAs. Now I have to remember, it's actually kind of critical. I have to remember that, oh, you know what? I did a track filter. So make sure you go back to all, right? Otherwise you'll come back, you'll be like, what am I looking at? It's not a layout. It's not a spill zone. Nothing's lit up here and you'll get really confused and you wonder why you're seeing that, right? So again, track type, I could go and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I could go and say, I don't know, folders, just folders. Show me nothing but folders. And then obviously I can still work from that. I can kind of, you know, spill in from that. And again, because of my new workflow, it's populating 16 faders within one spill zone. That's why these are lighting up. Um, and that's, it indicates that with the, with the kind of the green indication. Okay. Just, just make sure you go back and you do, you type all that takes you back to an unfiltered state. Okay. That's very, very important. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at a couple last. Oh, one more thing, um, one more thing, um, one more thing that's also useful, and I think I've showed this before, but it's really handy. If you're doing a build, you're doing a layout build, right? <clears throat> you can help yourself by. So right now everything is expanded, right? I've I've expanded every kind of all my stuff. Okay, so I quickly want to add some things um, to a uh, to a folder, and maybe that's effects returns. That's a great example of a layout to build a layout quickly, because all of his stuff are nested within the food groups, right? So um, what I would do is I would hit assign, and I'm just going to clear all, right? What was that? That was shift clear all, and I'm going to do a filter on the master module to say only show auxes, because I want to quickly see, okay, what is he using for guitar, uh, uh, you know, uh, guitar verb, what's he using for vox verb, whatever, right? And I can pick and choose what I want to actually throw into um, my layout, right? So that's what I would do. So I'm going to sign, and remember that in the order that you choose these, that's kind of how they're going to come in, right? So maybe I want, oh, I don't know, maybe I want some of the drum stuff first, or maybe I want some of the guitar stuff first. So we'll just grab the verb and the delay, Grab those first. I want those to look at signal flow view, right? Inserts, right? And then we'll go grab uh, maybe the string plate and then some of these guys here that are being used for multiple purposes and make sure these are viewed in a way that I wanna see them, okay? That's basically it. I've, I've, I've helped myself quickly by going out of all, going into aux and finding all of a, a type, whether it's a folder, whether it's a VCA, in this case, it's an aux, Great, that's what I wanted. I wanted some effects quickly, and then I just hit store. And now I can basically say, you know, these are um, these are effects returns, right? Again, I've got a keyboard. That's handy. That's a quick thing to be able to get to quickly. Hey, so, Jeff. Yeah, we have mm -hmm. a we have a question. This is going to veer way off path. That's fine. No, nah, we, we like throw, that. Throw you a curveball. So, Sounds Greg good. would like you to explain how to use uh, with the pan module. Um, no, 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 it's no problem, Greg, I, but it, no. you know, we're here at the it's end and, and, and want to go ahead and, and uh, get the question answered, but he'd like to know how you could uh, do height adjustment with one of the joysticks and basically lock that in as a default way of using the pan module in a layout. Ah, okay. Um, so um, let's see. We're going to have to do a little bit of gymnastics, but that's fine. So let me just create a quickly. Okay, so we have a bed. So we're just going to go. So th I mean, this is a stereo session. It doesn't matter. We can absolutely facilitate that. And we're going to go and just do something silly here. And we're going to go and send something so that we have access. What do we have? We have a 5 1, we have an O bed, 702. Okay, that's fine. There's there's a crazy obed in here. Apparently, we'll use that. Doesn't matter. Um, and okay, so um, let's go. Let's view this in a different uh, in a different way. Uh, yeah, let's go to the theater mode for a second here. Okay, so couple things. So you're talking about the panner module. That's fine. Um, I mean, uh, this, this session is not really at most. Doesn't matter. I've got a 702 path we can use. We can talk to. It's fine. Uh, it happens to be this boom kick, right? 
So to get stuff into the panner, first of all, you have to attention it. That's really critical. So um, <clears throat> you have to be able to, um, to get to it. Okay. So uh, let me go back to what do we want to look at here. Yeah, big MTM would work. And um, okay. So, and I'm assuming he wants to see it on the panner module, which is fine. We can do that. Okay. So a couple things. The the track has to be attentioned to arrive at the panner module. Let me just stretch this out so you can see it better. Okay. So um, you should have access to the standard X Y because it attentioned. And the preference says basically the first thing, even if it's mono or stereo, it's going to show up at the left side. That's going to how it's going to work. Okay, so that's the first part. Um, to get to the Z or the height, right? You could do Shift Y, right? And that's going to actually then essentially use the 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 up and down of the second stick. So you have X, Y, and Z. Okay, and so that's that's kind of how that would work and whatever you attention is going to show up in that panner module you could lock that we talked about locks earlier you do have the exact kind of same interface which um if i lock this it's not going to go away right which means if i attention any other thing right i can see just attention stuff kind of randomly um uh, and um, obviously the, the, the master module is targeting a different a lead vocal channel, but if I set, let me set the pop up so that you can actually see the pan window. It's not, it's turned off right now. What I'm doing is I'm basically telling Pro Tools to automatically invoke the pan window when, I, when it sees touch information for something, right? I have attention lead vocal, but I'm gonna go and grab this guy that's locked and it's behind here, it's right here, right? X, Y, Z. Okay, so so that's glued there until I put it away um, and anything that I attention is going to fly into the panner, I can control the X, Y, Z from the from the master from the joystick module, I can control it if that's attention focused on the on the Center section. Um, I can, um, I think he was also asking, can you associate layouts with pan with with strips, yes, you can absolutely. If you looked at the, let's go back to the tracks page, and you probably looked at this, and if you scroll over um, to, let me go back into assign mode, right? You can associate uh, uh, tracks with a layout that, that arrive at the joystick, absolutely. And that's what you're seeing right now. Um, those are already loaded into there. I could replace them with something else. Jeff, I think, I think the way I understood Greg's question was, is there mm -hmm. a way to get that uh, Z always being a default um, uh, height adjustment on the, the second joystick. Um, so I've got remember joystick knobs by touch turned off. And the only reason I'm bringing that up is, I'm gonna sh kind of show you two different ways that are I think important. So I've unlocked you, right? Let's see, you're unlocked. Okay, cool. So I've got the boom there and um, one possible way is to have the height on the encoder okay so this is just going to fly whatever track you throw over there and then the z is here and if that preference is turned off it's going to just favor this association now what i don't think it's going to do by default and it's a good good option we should we should turn it on is to is to also bring this back right so right now if we go back to um, go back to our boom kick, right, which is here, I re-attention it. Absolutely, I have X and I have Z, and that's always going to work, and that's because that preference is turned on. I know this is a long a long road to what you asked, but yes, this you should have that. That should be sticky so that that does that as well, right? So, but in the meantime two workarounds. One was Roberts. The second one is to assign whatever second parameter you want to the encoder, and that will always come back every time. But we'll take that feedback. It's it's definitely useful. So sorry, that was a long road to get there. But um, it's an important, this is an important, um, this is an important preference, which basically says, do you want me to change the associations on a track by track basis, right, or not, 
right? So I'm just basically saying, you know, always have the Z, always have the height, for example, on the encoder. That's one way. And then obviously custom mapping, you can do that as well. But it's definitely a good idea to, to always have the XYZ option if you want it, right? Again, shift Y would give you that. Okay. Hopefully we, I got there eventually. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, anything, any last, any things before we wrap it up? Um, I know we're, it was kind of eclectic, but, um, you know, it's, it's really, again, there's so many different ways to work and I like to reintroduce ideas um, in a different way, right? Again, the concept of, oh, you know what? I'm, now I'm just one spill zone. Now I'm, I'm really leveraging folders and I'm doing things in a slightly different way than I, were, I was doing before. Um, understanding layouts, understanding where your data is, understanding how to store, how to modify, how to append, how to delete, how to move, how to, you know, all of that is very important. Um, and then, you know, essentially this is all about workflow and getting what you want quickly on the desk. So uh, with that, I think we'll wrap up. I appreciate your time and uh, thanks for stopping by. And as always, um, um, we will continue the, the exploration every month or so and kind of dig into some, probably by then we'll actually have some, some new functionality to talk about, but um, thanks very much.